It is Friday evening. It is about 8.45 on 1-19-2018. We had some difficulty installing SQL Server today in the <clears throat> uh, class at uh, Spring Creek. Let me run over the procedures one more time. I have the files here in SQL Server install files, and there are two of them. This, this uh, um, uh, folder gets created later. And basically, it's SQL EXP RADV underscore X64 underscore ENU. Now, you can Google that file and download it. Um, you probably have a different one. This is the file that gets downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that guy. And this file does not require a network connection to download if you have the file. Now, uh, you can get this file if you're at SQ, if you are at Spring Creek, you can go see Hong and I will make sure that uh, she has it. Otherwise, you can see one of the lab techs at um, uh, Preston Ridge or you can get it from me. So uh, you really should bring your laptop in and I'll make sure that you have this file. It's about two gigabytes, I think. Oh. Uh, well, one and a quarter gig. And I'm just gonna let this thing run without any further comment. Basically, I'm just gonna be taking the defaults, doing a straight installation. But I have to be sure that I am the Windows user that has the authority to install. I don't want to have to switch Windows users. So if I'm the whatever Windows user I'm going to be when I'm doing database, I want to be that Windows user now. And that Windows user has to have the ability to install the software. Okay. I'm going to click a new server standalone installation. I'm going to accept the terms. Won't get far if I don't. Run a rule check. You need to make sure all the rules pass. By the way, make sure that everything is up to date. Okay, I have my Windows firewall is down. I'm getting a warning on the firewall but that's okay. Um, I have to just make sure that there aren't any failures. So I need to turn on my firewall. Um, so make sure you're patched up to date and everything. Next. And I'm just gonna take the defaults. Uh, database engine, client tools. And if it didn't select it, you don't need to install the local database. I'm just gonna say next. I just took the defaults. The name of it will be the named instance will be SQL Express. Instance ID SQL Express. It gives you the directory. All, again, I'm just taking the taking defaults. Again, take the defaults. I'm going to set this one to mixed mode SQL server authentication and Windows authentication. I'm going to do mixed mode. This is going to be the password for the system administrator. This is a little bit different, install and configure. I don't really, we can just do install only on that and save some time. 
I accept. Next. And I believe I'm going to be running here for quite a while. So instead of letting you guys just uh, sit there and go through this, I'm going to pause the recording now. And I'll come back when, I, when this install is finished. So goodbye for now. Okay, that was about a 15 minute process or so. And I see that I have a restart pending. I'm going to have to do that. I think I can go ahead and install the rest of the stuff though before I do that. So I'm going to say okay. And oh, wait, so we'll double check and see do I have anything that failed. We do not. So it's going to ask me to restart. I don't think I need to restart right now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this window and I'm going to go to the SM, SSMS setup. And this is the graphical user interface. Yes, we will install this. Install. <clears throat> Again, we will probably just wait. So basically what I'm doing is I'm getting uh, install of the Microsoft SQL Server 2016 database engine and the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. I'm just getting a straight default installation on them. I didn't do anything special. I didn't make any um, decisions particularly with them. I just said install took the defaults. Looks like we're about halfway done. This one's going to be a shorter install. I'm going to pause the record. There's no point in you sitting there watching it. Okay, that didn't take very long. It's about uh, four minutes, maybe five on the second one. About 15 to 20 minutes on the first one and about four or five minutes for a total of, I've been uh, letting it install here for approximately 20 to 25 minutes, I guess. Uh, shouldn't take long and I didn't make any decisions really. All I did was just uh, just start it up and say go. So if you just take the defaults, everything's fine. I'm going to close that and we should be fine. I don't see it telling me to restart. So I'm going to go ahead and see if it runs. I might have to restart the the system here. I'm going to go check. The first thing I want to check is in my services. Notice I have a shortcut to it. In my services, do I have SQL Server, SQL Express, my server, SQL Express is installed and running and set to automatic at home. I'm, I'm at home. I'm going to change mine instead of automatic. I'm going to change my setup type to manual at home. Now I will start it and stop it when I'm done um, from here. So I leave it, it's still running. So everything should be fine. I could have left that open. I'm going to go back to my start menu. Microsoft uh, SQL Server Tools 17. Server Management Studio. Take it just a second to come up and here we go. Okay. I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Windows authentication and I'm going to log in as, I think this is the wrong. SQL Express. So my, uh, my, my SQL server is SQL Express and I'm going to connect with Windows authentication. Remember this, since I am the uh, um, administrative user of Windows, I am the administrative user of 
the, the database server. A couple of things I want to check. First of all, I want to check the first thing I'm going to do, and uh, this was where a lot of us had problems. I'm going to right click the server, the highest level here. So this is the server SQL Express. Right click and go to properties. From properties, I want to go to security. Make sure that I have SQL Server and Windows Authentication mode. So if we install this from the um, correct uh, file, it will ask us that as we put it in and we can select that. If it is not SQL uh, Server and Windows, make it be thus. If it's sitting here is just Windows Authentication, make it be both of them. That's all we have to worry about there. Just make sure it's this way. Otherwise, it's not going to work for us later. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user. So I'm going to go down to the security tab. Security. Up that down. One of them is logins. I'm going to right click login and I'm going to go to new login. For this one, the login name, I'm going to say SQL Server Authentication. Give it my login name. Mine will be SW Smith. And I give it a password. A password that in the password policy, since the password policy is enforced, it must have an uppercase, must have a lowercase, must have a number, and it must have a special character. Actually, it must have three out of four of those. I usually use all four of them. Have to do it twice. Now I'm going to uncheck. It comes with enforced password expiration. I don't want to do that because otherwise we'll have to change passwords in the middle of the semester and we don't want to do that. Okay. Right now I'm going to leave the default database set to master. It'll be a lot easier if we come back later and set it. I'm going to have to change the default database. So right now I'm going to say OK. Now I have a login. If I drop that down, I can see my login, SW Smith. Don't worry about the rest of them. Now I'm going to go to databases and I'm going to right click databases. I say I'm going to right click. Right click databases, new database. The debate database name, I'm going to give it my name. My name is going to be SWSMITH. I'm going to put underscore DB. Your name is not SW Smith. Now, here's the part that I want to make sure we get. The owner of this database, I'm going to browse. What is the owner of this database? SW Smith. And I have to check the box. Say OK. Now the owner is SW Smith. So the name is SW Smith underscore DB. The owner is me. Make your owner be you here at this point. We're going to say OK. <clears throat> We're going to create another database. Right click, new database. Now please check the name for this one. The last one you named as you pleased. <clears throat> this one we will name AP for accounts payable underscore. DB. Please check carefully that you have typed that. If not, uh, we're going to have problems later because when I try to run your code, it won't run. I'm not, I don't care what's in the other database. <clears throat> this one is our class database. Set the owner of this database to also you. SW Smith is the one that I'm, is my user. You may choose, you, you can have your own name. I suggest you keep it short, but that's okay. 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 Now notice I have two databases. If I look at the properties of either one of them, I see that the owner is SW Smith. The owner is SW Smith. Now, one last little um, 
deal that we need to do here. I'm going to close it on the databases. And I'll go back to the login and I'm going to right click SW Smith, right click him and go to his properties. I'm going back to the user. I'm going to set the default database to be SW Smith underscore DB. So when I create something, it just goes in there by default. And I'm going to say OK. We should be ready to run now. So this is the server. I could leave this running if I thought if I think I might need to um, troubleshoot it. I don't think I will. I'm going to disconnect. And I'm going to connect to the database engine. SQL Express, only this time I'm going to use SQL Server Authentication. This time I'm going to connect as SW Smith with my password. If I forget my password, I can connect with Windows Authentication and I will be the, 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 the server administrator. Uh, if you want to connect, click Remember Password, that's okay. Don't do that in the industry and then just say connect. If you get an error on the connection, then you probably are not set up for SQL Server authentication. Go back to the server, right click the server, right click the server and go to the security tab and check to make sure that you have done the uh, SQL Server authentication. And so now we are logged in as SW Smith. I'm logged in as SW Smith. You're logged in as whoever. Now we no longer have to worry about the, uh, who we are as the Windows user. It doesn't matter because I'm connecting through the SQL server, not through Windows. Let's test it. I'm going to go new query. Um, Mine is, mine is set up maximize. Let's see. Um, that's okay. Yours, yours might not look exactly like this. Um, create table. The name of the table is foo. This is kind of like test, uh, hello world, open parentheses. So I'm creating a table that has one field in it. And that field, the table's name is foo, and it has one field in it, and that is an integer named fee. So foo fee. Um, when I create the table, I should see that it, create, it works successfully. I'm going to go up here to execute. Execute, and I see commands completed successfully. Now. If you do it again, I want to see it again. This time when I do it a second time, I get an error message. Why am I getting an error message? Because there is already a table named foo. If I want to get rid of that, I can execute this. I can put another command in there, and that is drop table foo fool. Well, if I can type, drop table foo. Now, notice some things about this. The SQL programming language is not case sensitive. The SQL programming language does not care about things like um, uh, where it comes on a line. It could all come on different lines. That's fine. I'll be making some comments about formatting SQL. It is not all exactly the same, but SQL is not case sensitive. So if you write it all in uppercase, all in lowercase, it's, it's quite the same thing. What I do is I write my reserved words in uppercase. And if I make up the name like foo and fee, I write it in lowercase. Now, when I run this as a script all together, execute, it executes successfully because it drops the table first and then it creates the table. Now, if you have something highlighted, 
<clears throat> and you say execute, it will try to execute just that. So this tried to create the table again without dropping it. So if you get, don't have anything highlighted, unless you just want to run that, execute now is fine. For example, if I try to drop the table, it dropped it. If I try to do it again, it says it's not there. Now, once he's dropped, uh, I get an error. Let's see if we can create him. Execute. Okay, he should execute now. There. So it gets a little tricky sometimes. Um, basically, if he ran one time, everything's fine. If you say create table foo and he runs, everything is just uh, is fine. Let's see if we can. Pen the tab. Let's see if I do float. Okay, there we go. Uh, if I go to databases, where did we create this this uh, table that we just created? He was created by default in SW Smith. If I look under SW Smith and I look under the tables, I see foo. By the way, DBO means database owner. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to do here while I'm making the recording. I'm going to go over to Canvas. Sam. Colin.edu. So I'm going into Canvas and I'm going to go to the, it doesn't really matter which one I go to, I'll go to the first one I grab. Uh, I'm going to go to the modules. I'm going to go to module two. Drop down module two. I'm going to go to page five, create the accounts payable database. Now I want you to work through all of them, but I'm going to go straight to module five and I'm going to grab this accounts payable database. Where's my, here we go. Create AP SQL. Now I'm going to download, let's download him. So I'm downloading create AP. He's going to put him in my downloads folder, create AP.sql. Make sure you're not downloading an HTML file there. That's uh, just the picture. So I save the SQL file. Here he is. And now I'm going to go back over to my SQL server. Mm. That's properties. I don't need you open. No. Okay, I'm going to go to file and I'm going to open the file. So, file open. <clears throat> I'm just opening a file here. What's the file? Where is the file? The file is in my downloads. What is the name of the file? Create AP.SQL. Doesn't matter where you put it. I suggest you put this someplace where you can get to it again. Uh, save it to your flash drive. It's not very big. This is just a text file. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And here is the, <clears throat> the script. Now, if you want to scroll through it, you may. And it goes on and 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 on. That's uh, not real important right now. By the time we get done with this class, you'll be able to read it and know what it is. Basically, what it does is I choose, I say use AP underscore DB. All of our work in the class is going to be done in AP underscore DB. Well, not all of it. From time to time, you'll test things and you'll use your database. That's what your database is for, just doing junk. I don't want you to, to write junk to this AP database. Um, you have a copy. I'll have a copy of it. And when we run this it will create the database. So I'm, I've opened it now, all 800 lines of it in all its glory, and I'm going to do execute, bing. 
and I get some messages. And at the end, the one I wanted to see, I was expecting to see everything was fine, but I, didn't see, I don't see any error messages. Uh, everything was, let's see, can I get, I want to see the, the good messages. Well, I don't see any red messages. Basically, these are just inserting data into it. We're gonna learn how to do that right away. And now if I go back over <clears throat> and look at my, Object Explorer, and I, now I'm gonna go look at the AP underscore DB, and I'm gonna look at tables. I find that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tables in there. And those are the tables that we are going to be working with. Now this is a graphical user interface. Um, if I want to see, for example, the vendors table, I could right click it and I could say, edit the top 200 rows and I will see the data. But guess what? We're not going to do very much with that because we're gonna be mostly using SQL. So this just lets me know that the data are in there and I can take a look at what they are. But if we wanted to do this, we might as well stay with Microsoft Access. But this is SQL, so this is the SQL class. So we're gonna go on with SQL. At this point, you should have your database up and running. You should have run one a uh, quick hello world kind of query that says create a table, <clears throat> excuse me. And then you should have run the AP underscore DB SQL script that created your uh, accounts payable database. If you at any time hose your database as we go along, and you probably will, all you have to do is run it again because that database, that's set to where you can run it as many times as you want to and it just replaces the tables. It does not try to create a new table. Uh, so it replaces the data, brings all the data in the database up to date, and the, all of the dates are set correctly. And then, uh, so don't have to worry about messing up your data. This is your place to play, it's your place to experiment, it's your place to make mistakes. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, post this uh, this video if there are any questions you may email me or uh, use the canvas emails best and um, we'll see you on Thursday or Friday bye bye